then we continue. The silly season is right where we want it to be in heating up. Tonight, we have somebody who's served the town for many, many years and one of the actual races in town. So why don't we start with an introduction? Um, I'm Ken Evans, uh, candidate for the uh, Board of Health, candidate for re-election. Uh, Ken, I always start with a very basic question. I'm from Milford. Why should I vote for you? Uh, let, me, uh, let me not talk about myself. Let me talk about the Board of Health because we, we kind of work as a team effort. And Let, so I look, before you start, you work as a team for what, one or two years now? Or well, <laughs> I, I think the present team has probably been there for uh, at least 25 years. It's, least. it's amazing to yeah, me that I the youngster it, is a Len, decade Len, on. Lenny, Lenny. Lenny is the youngster, yes. But uh, what I would like to do is, is tell you what the Board of Health is. The Board of Health is many things. Uh, to begin with, uh, we contract with the VNA, the Visiting Nurses Association. They conduct uh, flu clinics for us. They do health screening clinics. They do wellness clinics. Uh, so we are, in essence, the visiting nurses, as, as, all, uh, as we are all of the people we contract with. Now, in 2014, we reviewed uh, what the v visiting nurses, or the VNA, does for us. And we said we would like to renegotiate the contract, which we did. Uh, and we saved, we saved uh, $27,000 plus. Now, of that $27,000, we're going to use thirty-seven fifty dollars of it to put a nurse at the senior center. We're going to give it a three-month try and see what results we have. We have had requests for this, and we've responded to it. The 23,000 remaining, we will turn back into the town of Melford. Uh, we, uh, we also uh, contract with the Republic Services. They're the people that pick up your trash, uh, your recycling, and they deliver it to Wheelabrator. Now, Wheelabrator, we are in a 20-year uh, contract with Wheelabrator. We're in our ninth year now. And part of that contract originally stated that after 10 years, we could opt out. So what we did, we contacted uh, not only us, uh, other communities also, but the town of Melford was there. Uh, we contacted Wheelabrator, and we said that we'd like to renegotiate the contract. As a result of our renegotiation, we went from uh, $75.65 a ton, which is the tipping fee, to $64 a ton. Now, this will save us, and, and this went into effect January 1st of 2015. They, uh, they could have waited until July, which is the fiscal year, but we got it for January 1st. So this year alone, we're going to save and return to the town of Melford $45,000 out of our budget that we already have. Next year, when we prepare our budget, we will uh, earmark $100,000 out of the wheel operator expense. So uh, going forward, we're going to save $100,000 next year. And over the remaining 10 years uh, of the contract, we will save pretty close to a million dollars. Uh, we also operate a transfer facility. This is for items that uh, are not collected uh, at the street. Uh, that you can bring your grass there, your leaves there, uh, brush, the uh, construction materials, things of that nature. Now, I had the, uh, one of the uh, people in the office look it up because I wasn't sure when we started the sticker uh, fee. But they did find a copy that we had sent to the Melford Daily News. We advertised it. It was 1985. And at that time, we were not accepting grass, leaves, brush, or any of that. So as you can see, we have advanced the service. Uh, the fee at that time in 1985 was $20. 
Sounds familiar. Yes, the fee today is $20, 30 years later. So we not only want to service our community and, and, uh, and town, but we, we're frugal as well. And we don't want to take in any more money than is necessary. Uh, so this, this is, uh, as I say, another alternative. It's one of the very few towns in the Commonwealth that has both uh, trash collection and a transfer station, and it's all on the base of the tax. It, there's no fee, there's no bag fees uh, to have your trash collected. It's all done on your tax base. Uh, we also run a hazardous waste program once a year. And this is for items that you can't get rid of normally. You can't throw it in your trash. You can't uh, bring it to the transfer station. Uh, these are items that are, again, hazardous waste. Like paint? And uh, no, paint, paint we take at the transfer station. We'll take paint and we'll also take oil, uh, motor oil recycling. And there's no charge for either one of those. Uh, but uh, this is more like uh, you know, gasoline, uh, maybe... Uh, some kind of um, uh, spray that you would use to kill weeds or your lawn. Oh, okay, so uh, like the pesticides, pesticides the herbicides, that, things, things like, on yes, that line. Things on that line. So we, we have that hazardous waste day once a year. Last uh, uh, year, in 2014, we took in 8,500 pounds of hazardous waste. Now, this is what we're keeping out of the environment. And yeah. the cost for this hazardous waste program is uh, paid for out of the funds that we have in the transfer station. The fact that it doesn't cost any tax money, I think, is wonderful. Candidly, I think the thing I'm most proud of is the programs that you all have put in. Keep Asylum Street from being a dumping ground, or somebody's got a bucket of a hazardous waste, a pesticide, a petroleum-based product. Yes, they should go pay $100 to a private person to remove it. Right. With the economy the way it is today, I more believe it would get knocked over in the backyard somewhere right. and then right into our aquifer. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to prevent by having this hazardous waste day and not charging the residents. You have to be a resident of Melford, but there's no charge. And it doesn't matter whether you bring down a pint of whatever or you bring down a gallon. But that's four tons of material that we know now are safely removed from Milford. Yes. Versus in a backyard or somewhere. Right. Wow. Yep. Now, in addition to this, uh, we also, as I'm sure you're well aware, we do uh, restaurant inspections if we find violate. Now, the state requires us to do the restaurant inspections twice a year. We do it four times a year. Uh, and we do the reinspections. If we find violations, we don't just say, here's your violations, correct them and walk away. We come back. We come back until the violations are corrected. If we come back a, sec a second time uh, to check on you, if, let me back up a little bit. We make the original inspection. Then we go back to make sure that any violations are corrected. Now, if they're not corrected and we have to come back another time, then we charge well, sure. Person. You give me two chances. If right. I can't clean it up on two. Exactly. So then we charge. Besides uh, restaurant inspections, we do uh, license uh, body art, uh, tanning salons. Uh, I'm trying to think of all of them. There's, there are so many. I, I had a list, but I didn't really want to well, read it. Well, <laughs> I mean, Kenny, some of the things that come out, um, Milford is unique in that our trash fee. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get a kick out of when towns compare what they pay in taxes to Milford, the average house is 4400 Right. Yet I see them with the little designer trash bags. Mm -hmm. When my daughter was living in Worcester, I think it was $3 for this little bag. Yeah. I was amazed at how quickly those bags get used up yeah. and how much it really does cost you. Mm. Yeah, and, and it, that's, uh, that's the... Uh, you know, the alternative. If you, if you go to a, a, a bag fee, uh, like the hazardous waste, how many of yeah, How many will end up on Asylum exactly, Street? Exactly, exactly. So we're, we're, we're glad to provide this service to the citizens of Melford. And again, not to be redundant, but 
we are very frugal in the fact that we watch our contracts and we rene renegotiate if we think we have a reason to and it can save us some money or the town of Melbourne. But you some also money. have the service that if I have a couch. Mm -hmm. Very good because uh, we are right now considering single stream. Well, single stream is very convenient for the, uh, uh, the, the, the contractor because the uh, person driving the truck doesn't have to get out of the truck. Just, he just we, what a joystick. They, right, they have uh, a, a bucket for uh, trash and a bucket for recycling, and he just sits there and boom, dumps it, and it's very econ economical for them. But we're looking at, well, what's it gonna cost Milford? First of all, we did address the fact that, you know, right now you can leave a chair out. Uh, hmm. Well, you can leave one large item out every week at no, no expense. It, it's provided it's nothing like a television well, or, no, or something that we have. Well, no, it can't be a hazmat, like right. a CRT tube. Anything that we have to pay to have sure. removed, we charge. But an old couch. Right. They can, I can uh, put an old couch down at the bottom. Yeah. All i got to do is move it to the bottom of my yeah. driveway. And that, as it stands right now, we would lose that ability if we go to the single stream. The other thing that uh, we would lose is... Uh, well, we'll not really lose it, but uh, they it, it's the cost of the containers. I think Franklin paid something like a hundred thousand dollars for the uh, to get for started to get started. Okay, our contractor has said, well, they'll give them to us. Well, that's so long as they have the contract. Right. Once they lose the contract, what do we do? We, if we've had say that we've had these containers, say we go to Single Stream and we've had these containers for three years. Now everyone's gotten rid of their trash barrels, they're getting rid of their recycle bins and, and everything. Now all of a sudden that contractor loses its bid. We go out for bid and, and that contractor loses. They're gonna take all those containers with them. Sure. Now what do we do? They're gonna give them to another town. Right, so what do we do? We're gonna spend... Uh, but now uh, single stream, I understand the concept. Mm -hmm. So instead of having two guys on the big truck, I've got one with a joystick. Right graduation comes right. or Christmas right now I got whatever it is my 90 gallon big bucket yeah well there is a couple times a, during the year you will that, exceed that no that question we're gonna no go question. over the one bucket exactly that is another drop now what do I do right I have to keep uh, it in my garage and kind of blend yeah. it in yeah. over yeah now Franklin and Franklin we we have uh, we've received a report that with this single stream, certain parts of town, which we would have a problem in the cent center of town, uh, because there's a lot of rentals there. And Franklin, uh, certain parts of town, the people have been dumping the trash into the recycling because, it, as you say, what if there's not enough room for the trash? So Franklin now is considering fining those people $100 every week that they do that. Well, but we get rated, don't, if you're doing recycle, mm -hmm. and you have, if they could call it clean re, cleaner, mm -hmm. more recyclables, don't you get a better rating from the trash people than if you're mixing garbage in with the recycle? I'm not sure how that works. They, uh, I, they do rate us, but I, I don't know if that's Well, I'm just thinking, if you keep it. throwing trash in the recycle... Well, they'll stop. They're, they're, what they'll do, like I say, they're, they're thinking now of fining the uh, homeowner $100 every time they do it. So, I mean, there's a lot of... Single stream seems good on the uh, outside, but like everything else, we don't just jump. We, sure. we study them and we look at good, and there's a lot of downside to single streaming. I, for one, have m many reserves, and uh, for I, for one, have not. No, I agree with you. I, I have a lot of reservations when I think of my Christmas or those special days when, yeah. you know, Graduation you, put, you put an extra couple bags down there and you say, please be nice to me. And yeah. candidly, they must have a sense of humor because they take them. Oh, they do. They, they, don't they understand. Them. That's it. They understand. I could see if they, I was doing multiple know. bags every week, they'd right. say, hey. Yeah, You're being excessive. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll report it to us. But, uh, yeah, you're supposed to put out four bags a week, but uh, if you have a party, maybe you have a, a, a birthday party or maybe you have uh, uh, some kind of a christening or, or sure. a bar mitzvah or confirmation or whatever, 
then they'll, they'll take those bags. They'll, they, they, if it, there's a, they, they know what their customers or yeah. good client or whatever, they're not really customers, but they know what the people put out weekly. And if all of a sudden there's three extra bags, they know, they know that that's some kind of a special occasion, they'll take them. Well, the other thing that comes up is people are asking, why do we spend so much money on the VNA to take care of immigrants? And I think there's a real, you know, like they wow. heard about the TB program. Right. The TB program, is, we're in the works with that, with the, sc with the school department and the VNA and the health board. Uh, why, why do we do it? Because we want to protect our children. And that's what people don't understand. Right. It's, it's not that we're doing it just to service them. It's to protect our children because if they wind up with TB and they sit in a classroom for three or four days before it's known, and before then you got we can be removed, twenty kids with TB exactly, and they change classes depending on the, the uh, sure. uh, uh, grade that they're in. So it, it's a potentially a good problem, and we are addressing it with the school department and again with the VNA. I mean, realistically. Legal immigrants in Milford, their kids are Milford kids. So we're mm -hmm. taking care of our own no matter what. Right. But right. a lot of people come from areas where TB hasn't been eradicated. Right. That's, that's a concern. You know, and I, for one, take my hat off to you. I tip my hat to you when I find out that you're having the VNA go to their homes mm -hmm. and make sure that people take the medication. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and we we have a very good partnership with the VNA. They were at our meeting last Monday, and that's when we uh, they agreed that they would put a nurse at the senior center, at least temporarily, and see how it works out. And right now, I think it's going to be a couple of mornings a week, uh, probably from nine to noon, and see uh, they can give the seniors advice on dentures, on the medication that they they're not going to replace the do physicians that well, no. don't, don't get the, that idea but they will if, if people have a question gee you know I Kenny, maybe how I many times they have minor questions that whether a denture fits right right seems pretty trivial unless it's your mouth that's hurting right exactly. some of the little health questions that you know and it, it's a terrible thing to say but you know the Portuguese grandmas they're tough. They're not going to bother going to a doctor right. to ask a little question. Mm. But wouldn't it? Isn't it nice that somebody can be there and help them understand? Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the need that we saw. Uh, Sue Clark approached me on it, and I said, "Let's see what we can do." And as a result, we will starting in April, we will have a nurse there a couple of times a week in the morning. And now, you know, when we talk about the transfer station. Mm -hmm. I mean, we grew up, well, now it's Plains Park, but we had the dump. Goose Park. <laughs> Goose, Goose Park. <laughs> the geese, the geese have co total control of that park. <laughs> yes. I'm going to put out a bottle of orange sauce <laughs> and just look at the goose and say, hmm. No. Um, we have a transfer station. Part of it's defensive because things don't fall off pickup trucks late at night mm -hmm. that we then have to go find. But it doesn't really cost us any money, does it? No, no. It's self-sustaining. Yeah. So I'm paying and, twenty. And, and as I mentioned before, not only is it self-sustaining, but we run the hazardous uh, collection day with the funds from that. I think last year it cost us like nine thousand dollars. It was paid for out well, of the transfer I remember when y'all came in front of the FinCom and said we need about. Sixty-eight thousand dollars worth of repairs to the transfer station. Mm -hmm. You know, the first reaction is gulp, and then you and Paul said, "And we have seventy-two in our kitty. We've been saving." Right. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, and we we have some work that to do down there now. We're having a problem with the trailer. The pipes froze, and we were not getting any water in. And I, that could be major. I think uh, what I, my opinion, what needs to be done, the trailer has to be lifted up, and that whole foundation has to be raised, so somebody can get in there and do the work in, that needs to be done. Uh, we're also thinking it's uh, getting getting close to the time when we probably need to repave the uh, transfer station. Yeah. But again, that's all done with money that you've that we, saved the nickels accumulate. and dimes. And right. We're very frugal. <laughs> I mean, I like when you can offer a service to the town 
and you're not taking extra money out of my pocket to right, do it? Right. <laughs> That's a pretty good deal to I, me. I like it too. <laughs> and you know, the VNA taking care of, I mean, when my mom had her knees done, mm -hmm. um, was it a tremendous, overwhelming, wonderful thing that a VNA nurse came? Probably not, but boy, was it nice. I mean, yeah. the fact is... And, and we're so short selling them, or I am at this time, because I can't recall all the things they do. They do the record keeping for communicable diseases. Uh, a, a woman is pregnant and has a, a child. They do uh, maternity, maternity and child care. Uh, there's a whole host of but things again, they do. For just the fact... Now, we were fortunate because my mom lives with us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's my darling bride who knows all and keeps all under wraps. Um, she keeps everything under control and not every family is fortunate to have that. Right. But it was so wonderful, one, that somebody came to the house every other day just to check on mom mm -hmm. and make sure, but two, it, they were familiar faces. Right, right. It's not like a stranger coming in. Yeah, right. I mean these were people, people who know. I coached their kids or who right. served on boards with us. Yep. The VNA was just our, they were Milford people. They were yeah. our people. Yeah. And I mean, the whole budget for the whole VNA was. Was 67,000, is now 40. Uh, but we're going to have to increase that. Uh, as I say, we're going to have a nurse at the senior center. And if it works out well and it proves to be a, a, a real good thing and a needed thing, then we'll be looking to add uh, probably as, as, uh, as a limit uh, 15,000. To our VNA budget, which would bring it back up to 40, uh, 55,000. We're still 12,000 below the 67 that we were but paying before. When we you put it in perspective, the amount of service the VNA gives mm. the residents of Milford, I mean, 50 grand is a ton of money, huge. Right. But when you put it in perspective, really not yeah. a lot of money for the amount of service they provide. Absolutely. You remember the H1N1 virus in 2009-2010. The uh, they inoculated uh, 30, more than 3,500 people and there was no extra charge. You and know? again, little things like that mean so much mm. to our residents. Yeah, and the fact that they're available, that's the, that's the main thing that if, if a crisis comes down the road, they're there. And we had a flu clinic. Right, we have every year. They run that. And you think about yeah. how much that's worth, mm. you know, and again, even if you can afford the $29 to go to clinics or us, when you can go to the clinic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more important the people that can't afford it, the people that don't have insurance. There's no charge. If you have insurance, they'll ask you for your insurance card cool. because naturally they'd like to get reimbursed. Sure. And, and it helps sustain Because then they can help, help more sustain people. them, right. But if, if you don't have insurance and you can't afford it, it's a free clinic. Amazing. Mm. What do you see the biggest challenges coming in front of the Board of Health? The marijuana clinic. Uh, we have regular, that's another thing. Uh, with the state, gave them a license and they decided to locate in Melford. There were no, no regulations at all that came down from the state. We took uh, the initiative and adopted regulations as far as we could, as far as the time of operation, the atmosphere, in other words, they can't sell lottery tickets, they can't do anything that would give it a kind of an atmosphere of hanging around type thing. You go in, you have to show your medical identification, you pick up whatever it is, and you're out of there. Uh, so, I mean, we, we did regulate that. That will be a, a challenge, in a sense, to uh, watch. Uh, I think uh, the other challenge uh, is, again, the transfer station. We need to do some work down there. And but the Board of Health hasn't been shy. I mean, when I think of the overcrowding, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, that's... You know, that's a huge, always a challenge. That but that's the, a the huge housing, program that we yeah, took on as a 30, town. Article 37, which we uh, yeah, took on and we enforce it. We have uh, there uh, a group uh, every week uh, uh, from the building inspector, the fire department, uh, the health board, 
and uh, there's one other, I can't remember. And they select certain houses every week and they go in and check them just to let these landlords, especially the out-of-town landlords, know that don't try to get away with anything. And we aren't doing this just to be elitist or mean. No, no, we're doing it to protect the people that are living there. And if to protect the Milford residents. Right. Because, again, something like TB, mm -hmm. if you have 15 people in a house, the odds are a lot yep. higher that it can spread. Yep. And mm -hmm. then if they go to work or their kids go to school, right. it just keeps right. spreading out. And that's, that's, that's our main thing, to contain everything. Or, I mean, you know, you think about the electric requirements in a house for one family. Mm. Okay. The minute you put three families in there and there's more little hot plates and more grills, yeah. the chance on a fire at your neighbor's house gets a lot higher. It certainly does, which endangers the entire neighborhood. Right. So as we come to an end, I'm from Milford, Ken. Why should I vote for you? I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the health board does. And I'm part of the health board and I'm part of that team. There are three, four, four of us, Paul Mazzucchelli, is just fantastic. I think we have the best health officer in the state. Well, considering the young, the young one, yeah. young Lenny, who's only been on the board 25 years. Right. I mean, one heck of a team when you start thinking you got 25 to 40 years experience mm -hmm. in everybody. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I think even Lenny would chuckle if we called him the youngster with only 25 right, years experience. <laughs> As always, thank you for joining. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. You know, again, I'll never ask you to vote for a specific candidate, but I'll beg you to get to know the candidates. Pick a candidate that you feel will represent your values and help the town. Somebody who gets out, stands up, and is counted. That is what Milford's about. So please get to know your candidates and get out, and I'll beg you to vote and let everybody know how you feel. So as always, thank you for helping. Thank you. May God bless, and may tomorrow be a better day than today. Have a good night. Not too long since I've been home